Hey, y'all. It's your girl, Dr. J. I have been gone for a minute to deal with some personal matters, but during this time, God has revealed things to me and allowed me to gain clarity regarding the plans he has for my life. And I'm looking forward to sharing my testimony with you all in the near future because it will be nothing short of amazing, but I will save that for another time. Now, before I jump into the message God has for his people, I would like to acknowledge the fact that it is Women's History Month, a month where we celebrate the women who have made strides and who have made a positive impact so women like me and so many others can be where we are today. This includes women like Sojourner Truth, Bessie Coleman, Shirley Chisholm, Sonia Sotomayor, Ellen Ocha, and even women like our mothers, grandmothers, and aunts, sisters, who have made a difference in our lives. This is the perfect time to recognize them and to thank them for all that they have done. With that said, I want to jump into the message titled, Trusting God in Your Brokenness. This is a significant message because there are so many people dealing with brokenness and trying to navigate their way through this. So many people who are in a space of feeling desperate, feeling overwhelmed, anxious, and like they're on their last leg and they don't know what else to do. Feeling like they have been praying and waiting and waiting and praying, but nothing is happening. Nothing is moving. If this sounds like you or feels like where you are, then this message is for you. Now, to put things into perspective, I want to talk to you about Hannah. You see, Hannah's story has been on my mind, in my spirit, coming up in my prayers and my time with God and in messages I have heard for almost two weeks now. You see, Hannah's story is significant and there are so many things we can learn and so many messages that can be taught from her story. But God wants me to focus on how Hannah trusted him, even in her brokenness. See, Hannah was the wife of Elkanah, and she was a barren woman. The reason why she was barren was because God closed her womb. Now, Elkanah also had another wife, and her name was Penina. Now, the young people today would say Penina was Hannah's op, or in other words, her opposition. While Hannah was barren and without a single child, Penina had sons and daughters, and she mocked Hannah. She taunted her for her barrenness. And she provoked Hannah to make her miserable. She made Hannah's life so miserable that Hannah wept and did not eat. Now, Elkanah, knowing this and knowing that Hannah was barren, would give her a double portion when he would go up to make an offering. He loved Hannah and he saw her pain and the way Panina treated her. So he tried to make up for it by giving Hannah more. But Hannah refused to eat and drink and she continued to weep. Now, Elkanah thought she should have been good because he gave her more and because she had him. In fact, in 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 8, he asked her, why do you weep? Why do you not eat? And why is your heart grieved? Am I not better to you than 10 sons? You see, Elkanah couldn't understand why Hannah would continue weeping and refusing to eat or drink. He felt like he had given her more than enough so she should be okay. But Hannah wasn't okay. The Bible says she was in bitterness of soul. She was broken. She was miserable, and all she could see was her op taunting her, even after she went up year after year to pray and ask God for a son. Hannah was so broken that she wept in anguish, and she made a vow to God in verse 11 that if he would look on her affliction and remember her by giving her a son, then she would dedicate that son back to him. See, Hannah got so desperate, so bitter, so broken, so miserable that she continued to pray. And she prayed so hard one day that only her lips were moving, but no sound was coming from her mouth. Hannah's disposition made her appear drunk. But Hannah shared that she was not drunk. She was sorrowful in spirit. And she was pouring out her heart and her soul to the Lord. See, Hannah was in such pain and anguish that all she could do was pray. All she could do was cast her cares upon God. But this says something about Hannah and her faith. 
You see, there were a lot of ways she could have handled this. She could have taken her brokenness to the neighbor down the street, to her cousins around the way, to her friends, or to anyone else who would listen. She could have taken it to a whole list of people who were not in a position to help her. But Hannah took her pain, suffering, and bitterness of soul to God. You see, I believe Hannah knew that no one else could do what God could do. She knew that the people around her were not equipped to bless her in the way she needed to be blessed. She knew that they were not qualified to solve her problem. So she took everything she had and all that she was going through to the problem solver. Hannah probably thought, I know I look crazy. I know these folks think I'm cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs and even my husband over here looking at me crazy because I'm in distress, but I'm still going to get up and take my brokenness, my misery, and my pain to the one who I know can and will show up for me. Hannah didn't allow her situation or her circumstances or her opposition to stop her from believing in God and believing that he can and will show up. Hannah was down. She was down so low, but she still knew where to go to be lifted up. She knew who she was, and she took the liberty to remind God that she was his maid servant, which meant she was a submissive servant of the Lord. Hannah lifted up her eyes to the heavens, and although she was thought to be drunk, once it was realized that she was not drunk, Hannah was told to go in peace and God will grant her the petition of which she asked him. The Bible says after receiving this word, Hannah went on about her way and she ate and her face was no longer sad. Now, this was a pivotal moment for her because Hannah asked God for what she desired and she poured out her soul and everything she had in her to the one who she knew could meet her needs. Then in verse 19, it says that they, so her and her boo, rose early in the morning and worshiped God and returned home where Elkanah went into Hannah. Or in other words, they did the do, y'all. But it also says that in that moment, God remembered her. And in the process of time, Hannah conceived and bore a son and she named him Samuel, which means offspring of God or name of God. And she named him this because she asked for Samuel from the Lord. So what we must learn and receive from this part of Hannah's story is that while she was broken, while she was hurting, while her enemy was taunting her, and while she was in her misery, Hannah still believed in God and his ability to show up. She still believed that God would grant her the desires of her heart. Hannah was like some of us. She was going through it. And she felt like she had been in her waiting season for so long, but she kept praying and believing God. The other piece that is important is Hannah did not allow her situation to determine her expectations. She didn't allow the fact that she was barren or that her op was messing with her and popping out babies to determine whether she would put her hope, faith, and expectation in God or if she would react differently. You see, she didn't change who she was. She didn't flip out and start acting like she was on Real Housewives of Elkanah. She wasn't hollering about standing on business or, or giving big Israelite energy because Panina had a beef with her. She didn't even speak on barrenness or refer to herself by her circumstances. Instead, she focused on God and what she expected him to do for her. Basically, she was standing on kingdom business and not allowing herself to take her focus off of God. However, this is not necessarily what we do in our brokenness. A lot of times we focus so heavily on our situations and our circumstances, and we take our eyes off of the one who has all power in his hands. We take our gaze off of God. And we start moving like it won't happen for us. We start acting like things won't change. The situation won't work out. Like God won't show up for us. We get temporary amnesia and we forget what God said in Psalms 37. We forget that if we delight ourselves in the Lord, that he will give us the desires of our heart. That if we commit our way to him, that he shall 
bring it to pass. It didn't say he might, he maybe. It said he shall, meaning he will bring it to pass. And this is especially true when we are so broken, so down, and so hurt by the things that are happening or not happening in our lives. When we are waiting and waiting for God to show up, but it feels like there's no change in sight. I'm talking about real situations like you've been waiting and praying year after year and God still hasn't sent your spouse. You've been waiting year after year and you're still not pregnant. You've been waiting year after year for that house, but you're still in an apartment or sleeping on your mama's couch. You've been waiting year after year for that business to move from a dream or a plan and nothing has launched. You've been praying for that wayward child to find their way back home, but they keep going astray. You've been waiting for the right job opportunity, but you keep getting met with rejection. You keep waiting for the doctor's report to change, but it keeps coming back the same or worse. You've been waiting for that spouse to get their act together and things keep going downhill. You've been waiting for the dysfunction and the mess in your family to change, but these folks keep acting a doggone fool. Whatever it is, you've been waiting for God to move. And now you're at your breaking point. You're at the point where you are so broken, and if God doesn't show up, you might just lose your mind. But take your cue from Hannah. While she was down, she did not count herself out. She did not throw in the towel and say, well, I guess God doesn't care about me or my hopes and my dreams. She didn't give into being taunted by her op and say, well, God, I'll spend the rest of my days in misery being ridiculed because I am barren. She took everything to God in prayer and asked him for what she desired. She was sober minded, which means she was self-controlled and she paid attention to how she lived and her behavior. So she didn't get tripped up by her circumstances. So for us, that means we don't need to run to social media to tell everybody we're broken. We don't need to burn up the phone line telling everybody our problems or asking everybody and their mama's uncle to pray for us. We don't need to give into our situations or our circumstances because we've been praying for a long time and God hasn't shown up. We don't have to send a message through the group chat so everyone knows what we're going through. Our first course of action should be taking our anxiety, our stress, our circumstances, and our desires to God in prayer. Now, that doesn't mean that we can't talk to people about our troubles or seek advice or godly counsel from others. It means that we must take it to the throne before we take it to the phone. Simply put, we must take our brokenness, our petitions, and all that we desire and go through in life to God. So just like Hannah knew that God was a problem solver, we must know that God was, still is, and will always be our source and the solution to our problems. He's a present help, y'all. So I want to remind you that you, if you are broken, defeated, and desperate, if you are in a desperate state, remember Hannah and trust that God has an appointed time for every blessing. When it was time, God opened her womb and blessed her with the son she had been praying and believing God for. Now, he actually blessed her with greater, but that's a message for another day, y'all. Just know that this may not be your exact situation or prayer, but trust that God hears you, sees you, and he will bring it to pass. Whatever's in alignment with his desires for your life, he's going to bring it to pass at the appointed time. All right, y'all, I hope this mess message blesses you and meets you at your point of need to help you with worshiping God in your brokenness. I've also dropped a link in the description for a song by my Victor Thompson that I put on repeat when I am at my wit's end or just feeling that brokenness. I play this song and I worship God and spirit and in truth I give him glory I give him praise I praise him in the hallway so before the door opens I'm on the outside praising and thanking God and this is one of the songs that I listen to and I'm usually on my knees crying out pouring out my heart to God because I need him to move because I need him to remember me because I need him to show up I need him to keep his word 
So I'm going to link this song here for you. May it bless you like it blesses me. As always, like, share, comment, and subscribe. Peace and love. It's your girl, Dr. J.